Hello everybody, <coughs> um, welcome back to another Magic the Gathering Arena video. So today uh, the rare I am looking at is Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. So for those who don't know, Jetmir is a one and a Naya, so a red, green and a white. It's a legendary creature cat demon. Uh, it's a 5-4, so 5-4 four for 4 is alright. Um, but it's more the abilities that we care about. So creatures you control have plus one plus zero and have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures. So two creatures in addition to Jetmir does count itself. Um, one plus oh, plus one plus oh, and trample as long as you have six or more, and plus one plus oh, and double strike as long as you have nine or more. So we're really focusing on the top line, uh, plus one plus oh, and vigilance, uh, because three creatures is a very achievable target in a creature deck. Uh, and also, plus one, plus one, trample, when you get six, is kind of the finisher level. Um, you know, if you get to nine, the game's pretty much over anyway, but it is nice to have that as a finisher, you know, an extra sort of topper in case of sort of like creature standoffs, which do happen occasionally, but in this standard, not, not so often. So this is our build around for the deck. Um, the sort of tactic that I think I've really gone with Jetmir is basically to tack him on to... A version of mono white uh, because mono white is your classic creature deck the reason basically the reason that I went for mono white is I've tried a kind of Naya based approach of Jetmir uh, trying to use some more red and green creatures and they're simply not as good as the white ones uh, the main reason is that we wanted to build around also including Thalia so Thalia basically means it's gonna suppress some of the board wipe strategies which are gonna crush creature decks in general uh, by making it cost a bit more and hoping hoping to sort of buy us that extra time and let us get across the line um, with our jet mere damage basically. Um, we're also using four copies of Raydan, uh, Goal of the Worthy, to help us get there so uh, this meta is quite creature unfriendly in the sense that there are absolutely tons of board wipes you know it's it's been a meat hook massacre meta for a long time that is no different in these days uh, but there's also now depopulate for white blue control um, and various other board wipes there's a red black corpse explosion and etc so Redan is basically here well it doesn't stop corpse explosion but it does stop the others uh, to make the board wipes cost two more uh, and also the Valk mirror is a lovely sort of um, swinger in terms of if the opponents playing lots of targeted removal it makes each one each of our creatures have ward one effectively uh, but also it's nice in the creature uh, battles for the um, prevent one damage so it's just basically an all-round powerhouse i would say in, in this current meta i've never found a game where i've drawn a ray down and been sad about it so um i used to have more copies of brutal cathar and skyclave apparition we're down to four in total so basically four pieces to removal for the whole deck because this way of protecting our own creatures and sort of aggroing our way across the line seems to be the better way to go in, in my sort of anecdotal experience which is quite small at the moment um other new capenna cards are playing playing two fleet foot dancers so this is one and anaya uh, it's a four four trample lifelink case it's basically the other top end of the deck, uh, sort of. Uh, I've only got two copies of this, so I can't really count it for the rare library. It doesn't quite fit as a four of because what we're trying to do is get lots of creatures down for Jetmir. So these two don't work. You know, they're not particularly synergistic. But the four four trample lifelink haste is nice with things like all of the training creatures that this deck generates. So a we're playing Torrens, which puts out loads of training creatures and has training itself. And we also have Hopeful Initiate, which has training. So this is kind of like the high power creature of the deck, as well as Jetmir that helps us sort of keep those things training, growing, and finishing the game for us. Um, other Streets of New Capella cards, we're playing one Sanctuary Warden. So this really is just a top end, you know, trial it out kind of card. So it's a four and two white, so six costing Angel Soldier. Uh, it's a five five flyer and it enters the battlefield with two shield counters on it. Shield counters mean they can't be destroyed or dealt damage whilst it has that on. First instance of either removes it. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may remove a counter from target creature you or planeswalker you control if you do draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one token so um, this is there to sort of give us that you know top end I'm just trying it out really it's probably a bit too expensive for this deck in in real life <laughs> um, but since I'm only starting uh, back at platinum at the moment I don't have to have a fully honed deck uh, to be competitive and I want to try this card out so we've got one copy of that and we've got two copies of Gala Greetus which is a one on a green elf druid, 1-1. One, one. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, choose one that hasn't been chosen, put a 1-1 one, one on it, create a tapped treasure token, i.e. I can't use it this turn, 
or gain two life. So basically, because we're a creature heavy deck and we've got creatures entering the battlefield all the time, uh, this alliance ability is triggering quite often. Um, I did have four of this in here as well, but um, to make room for our four aspirants and three Thalias, I had to drop this down to two. So I can't count this as a four of Gala Greeters deck, but I'm still keeping two in because it is actually still relatively synergistic. Um, uh, the main sort of powerhouse or thing that keeps the deck rolling is the Welcoming Vampire. So whenever one or more creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield, draw a card. It only triggers once each turn. Uh, pretty much all of our creatures have power two or less, um, particularly when they come in, apart from these two. Um, so this is basically going to keep us topped up and get us over the finish line in most games. Um, without, I found without four copies of this, the deck sort of runs out of gas a little bit and can fail to get that kind of last turn or two that we need to beat uh, the more combo -y or mid-range decks before they catch up with us. Um, and yeah, the rest of this is kind of an unknown quantity. Luminarch Aspirant, Hopeful Initiate, Skycave Apparition, Brutal Cathar. Um, we're running one... <coughs> Elspeth Resplendent again, more of it, more of a kind of trial of the card in a low curve deck. I think it's probably slightly more suited to decks that, um, you know, maybe a slightly more mid rangey creatures like angels or something. Uh, however, the, the pair of this and Adeline is so strong because giving Adeline flying or first strike or anything like that, even lifelink, is is amazing. So we're running one Elspeth as well. Uh, the land base is fairly white centric, as you'd imagine. I only have one Jet Mirror's Garden at the moment, so I'm only playing one. I don't even know if I need one, to be honest, just because the red and green mana isn't particularly useful in the deck. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I've had some moderate success on the ladder so far, but I haven't, haven't played with it too much so that I can, um, you know, show you guys me getting used to it. So without further ado, I'm going to run some games on the ladder and see how we get on. Okay, here we go. Let's see how Jetmare gets on. So just <clears throat> still in platinum at the moment. I'm just uh, just above bottom rank because I've been experimenting a tiny bit. Um, this is a nice hand. We've got our Jetmare. We've got some couple of creatures. Got the Sanctuary Warden as well. Not necessarily what we want in our opening hand, but never mind. Come on. Let's get going. Okay. So I think we want to put the Greeters down first, as it has the Enters the Battlefield ability. Still, I'm not 100% convinced by this card in this deck, but oh well. Don't even get to see how it performs now. Um, because it's basically a, a bad version of Aspirant, really, in this deck. I mean, it has the flexibility to gain life when we need it, but meh. I can't have eight Luminarch Aspirants, so. But I might struggle to build a board presence with this current uh, state of affairs, but this will be slightly harder to remove, hopefully. Can't just play the fire it anyway. I'm not sure mono red is that. Oh. <laughs> well, I think that shows that Jetmere is just too big to remove, apparently. Although, obviously, four health isn't. Four toughness isn't unbeatable, but okay. I'll try again. Okay, a bit more of a challenge this time, please. <clears throat> 78631. Um, we need a green source to make this work, but there are plenty in the deck. There we go. Uh, yeah, we've only got two K for the Frost Dragons. The only reason I wouldn't play this is if I thought I was going to draw another tap land like this, but uh, we're only running two of them, so. Uh, Fortel, probably a counter spell. I'm guessing it's going to be an arcane bombardment deck or whatever that silly card is called, which means Ray Down should be pretty decent. I just don't want to get it countered, so I'll probably try playing the Torrens this turn. Okay. Uh, I don't really want him countered either. Should have played the Aspirant pre combat. Uh, we'll try it. Okay, maybe not a counter, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, they would have used it on that, because that's a scary card. Uh, 
I'm guessing there's going to be some pain for my board coming here. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. A little bit tricky because I want to get the jet mirror down, but also uh, I don't want to get like burn down the house or whatever it's called. I think we'll raid down. So what I'll probably do is just put my counter here. Attack. Okay. That's alright. Zap to finish that off. Okay. Now we can play this pretty much pain free. this will mean Arcane Bombardment cost 8, so unless they uh, get rid of this first, we're safe. Um, that's not particularly helpful, but I think what I'll do is put both Aspirants in. Obviously, Syndicalism can cause me some pain here, but... Galvanic Iteration, a shock, or a spear, okay. I mean, creature hate decks are going to cause this deck pain. That is the problem. Look at this. This is creature hate. Um, which attack? And then stick this in, I think. Need to put a little bit more power on the board. And also, we don't care too much if it gets countered. I know that getting the Valk Mirror down will be helpful in terms of all the spot removal, but yeah, look, this is costing them six at least. Now they've got their eight for bombardment, but. Okay, great. Three of them in the top 14. I mean, I would pro no. I, I mean, I could try running three, but the problem is a my rare library uh, stipulation says I have to run four, but also b if you don't put four in, you just won't ever draw it. That's the way it works. If you put four in, you draw all of them. Well, at least we're representing lethal, which put, makes it hard for the opponents to take a whole turn to put arcane bombardment in. What is this, milk? Maybe. Yeah, okay. So three copy, three sets of Tashas. I mean, we've got some expensive cards in there. Don't think that's going to get them there. Nope. Okay. I mean, a lot of creature hate. I mean, if that was uh, just... I guess it was an Arcane Bombardment deck, but because the um, Redan doesn't really ever let them play it because you can't really take a whole turn spending eight against an aggro deck just to put something down that does nothing that turn. Um, yeah, GG. And next game. Um. Yeah, probably. Just need one land by turn three. Another game on the draw uh, as an aggro deck isn't particularly what I want, but it'll do. Okay. Greeters, but no green. Please give me my land by turn three. Please. Three draws. One land isn't too much to ask for. 40% each draw. Uh oh. Opponent's off to a flying start, and we are not. Thank God. So I would like to play the Vampire first, but I don't think I can really 
Ugh. Problem is, this can remove two of my creatures. I need to really lower that to one. Rather than taking the naturalist. If there's a removal enchantment, which there probably is. It's a pretty far start for this uh, low curve enchantment stick. I mean, yeah. Have to take that. I'd like it if this slowed up a little bit, the pain, but. Okay. Cathar down. Harmony back. I mean, we do have Skyclave apparitions that can release that, but whether we get them or not, we'll see. Um, I think we'll take the 1 1 for now. And then pile on this. So, uh, sharing some love amongst the creatures, as they've got lots of point remo spot removal, but they can double it. So, I could just be left with this 1 1. Ah, oh, that's painful. And now we're going to have to chump. Because they can double that effect if they want to. Unfortunately, I've not drawn any of my four removal creatures at the top 11. Could be over all this life link. 40 life. Just a casual. Okay, they are out now. But they've got one more go at this uh, huge thing. So, what do I not mind chumping with? Uh... Out of all of these, I don't want to chump with Jetmere. I could chump with this, the Greeters. Um, take the six off this. Maybe it's the Vampire to come in. We can gain two life, as I think we're chumping with our Greeters. And then put the 1-1 one -one in it. And then no attacks. Just hope they don't top deck removal, basically. Okay. Neither individual one of those is lethal. Do I bother trying to kill off the naturalist? Probably not this turn. I think we just chump like this. Okay, that's quite nice. Can take this, get one more creature back. Okay. This depends what they top deck, but we could be stable. I mean, there's quite a lot of life to get through, so it's still not looking brilliant, but... Oh man, that is, that is the opposite of what we wanted them to draw. Yeah, now they get two cards. Just give them lands, for the love of god. Okay, I'm going to have to block this, which probably means not jumping because it has got trample anyway. So we have to take out, or we'll let them choose between the Aspirant and the Vampire. I mean, it's not the end of the world to get rid of this, to be honest. Up to 54 life. Okay, so we've got six now. It's probably put two creatures in, isn't it? I think so. I'm not uh, not expecting great things from this game, but you never know. This is the kind of game where you might get to nine creatures of Jetmere. No, that's game over. 
can remove two of our creatures. <laughs> and then we're chomping and giving them their creatures back. GG. Didn't quite get there. I mean, I think if we'd have gone first, we might have had more of a chance, but yeah, never mind. Okay. Next game. Um, I don't like not drawing any of our one or two drops, considering we've got, what is it, 10, 14 in the deck or something like that? Maybe 12, I don't know. We've got a lot. <clears throat> Um, this might be a mulligan on the draw, it's just a bit too slow. Oh my god. Probably another mulligan. Don't really have any indication as to what I'm facing, but at least the opponent had to mulligan as well. So I don't feel too bad taking another one. Okay, that's better. Ditch one of those and one of those, I think. Same shit again. But runes, I suppose. It's gonna be a painful start again. <laughs> but at least we have Thalia to slow them up. Make their runes cost them a bit more. I was hoping they'd get stuck on two lands and not be able to afford the runes. <laughs> um, so if we draw a land, we'll put the, probably put the Vampire in. If not, Aspirin. Okay, we have. Because it's basically now or never for the vampire. Because we need to get value out of it, I think, to have a chance here. If I can draw through to get a Cathar or a Skyclave apparition, we'll be happier. If we can't, then we won't be. Problem is, we're taking seven or so here. Okay, not if they put that on there. Interesting, opponents thinking it's slow. They're not attacking with the Runeforge Champion either. Mm, not ideal. Um, I think we'll probably... We can do this. I hope the opponent continues to take it slow. But we could be dead this turn, I think. <coughs> So they have leaf if we don't block. So we would double block the rune forge if they attack now. With everything. If they just attack with the visitors, then I'm not blocking. Go to one. Okay. So if I play the land, we've got five, which lets us play these two. And we get two more creatures. But if we play Jetmere, gives all the creatures. Yeah, I think we need to play the two creatures. I mean, yeah. I don't think we're actually going to have enough toughness on the board to survive, but you never know. So what have we got? Three, seven, nine, twelve, thirteen. And they've got nine trample damage. We have to less one of ours. So we, we survive as the board is now. Uh, obviously, that's not the situation. They play one spell. They probably gain three power, and then we're at a loss. But I don't know if they'll if they'll realise. 
just the best we could do. So it wasn't too, too much point putting too much thought into it. Yep, and then one more rune wins the game. Just taking the opponent a while to realise it. I mean, my one chance is that they don't attack with both instants, but that would be madness, so... Come on, do it, so I can concede. Oh my god. Okay, GG. <coughs> We'll try again. Okay, so I decided to um, stick a sideboard in and play best of three, um, following the two losses to the enchantments decks, because if we're playing against decks where they just build up one creature, we need more of our removal creatures. And if we're playing against control decks, then what we've got is, is a lot better, uh, but, but can be improved. So I figure let's give it a go in best of three. Um, because we can really tailor the deck to what we need. I've also put in Archon of Myria into the sideboard um, because we don't actually rely on double spelling too often. So let's see how this helps. It's quite an easy, like for the, having the mono white aspect means it's a pretty easy deck to like specialize. So uh, hopefully we'll get on our own. Uh, Thali are not that helpful here, but Yeah, probably the still the best thing to put down. Looks like we're playing against just a pure mono white look. Here's the apparition. Okay. Probably not the Cathar, because we don't we don't wanna let them uh, get another prop of the spellbinder, so Interesting that they trade that for that, since I have no air defense. Okay, the opponent get twitches first with their brutal Cathar. Now is probably the time for ours, since we have a Sky Blade Apparition on the bench over here. Seem to be picking quite a few lands out of the deck here. Six out of eleven. Hoping the lands slow up and we start getting some jet mirrors. Okay, opponents like run aground by the looks of it. Yeah, that's okay. I think we're definitely the beat down here, so. Okay, that's nice. I'm playing this over this just because they can see this card. I want to make them think a little bit. Um, if we put it on this, it's a double block for, to kill ours. So 17 to 10, obviously the opponent's turn. See if they can find a removal creature. Doesn't look like it. Now it's do they keep attacking with this initiate, or have they realised now? Okay, they realised that they aren't the beat down anymore. And we've drawn out that spellbinder, that's nice. Um, not the most helpful draw, to be honest, but we can play this. Let's remove this. That way they only get a 1-1 one, one back. We draw a card. Uh, we can put it on here and attack, I think. That's probably the best thing to do. We can attack with these two for half their life. That's probably on our Cathar. Okay. Interesting to see what they pick here. Maybe to start attacking again? No. Okay, we can get the Sanctuary Warden. That's a nice draw at this point. Or we can Valk Mira. Both are pretty good. Thing is, they can't block with their two Cathars, right? So, no way they want us to have those back. Sanctuary Warden, though, they've got two Cathars down already. It can be very, very hard to remove them. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah. I like these kind of battles where you have to think a little bit. Yeah, okay. Game one. So we're playing against creatures really, so I would say we want these. We're gonna be on the draw, so we probably want that. This is not that helpful, although they do they are playing the flying creatures, but this is more for the angels matchups. Um and there's not loads that destroy, although can be a nice trick up this ace up the sleeve to have. Um, yeah, maybe I will put that in. This is nice and creature matchup, so I won't take that out. So things we need less in this matchup are these, although I still want to keep one or two. Uh, this we need. This we need, as it's the difference for us. We need this less, and we need this less. I think that's probably our deck. Sadly, we only have three drops on the draw, so we're probably taking a mulligan there. <laughs> now this is so tempting. I think we can give it a go. This is where I just don't draw lands, but you know, let's try. Just need to draw one. Nope. This could be a very short game. Great. Yeah, that's probably game over pretty much. We'll give it one more. Katan. No. GG. Okay. Great game. I mean, kept a one lander, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, we're going to be on the play, so we can ditch that for. I'm not sure what we want out of these. Sentinel. No, I don't care about the graveyard. Probably an Archon. Okay. Let's see if we can draw slightly. I mean, <laughs> can I just shuffle something that isn't a one land handout, please? It's basically what I want. Anything with more than one. Look! What is this? I can't play one hand hands, as proven. We will take this and ditch a land, I think. Ditch this. Uh, I want to play this on turn too, so we'll just play the cave. <clears throat> okay. I think we'll play this and this. Obviously the initiate can help remove the hole if if it gets to that point. Nope. This is definitely an Adeline time. See if the opponent keeps attacking here after. No, I didn't think so. Um, yeah, we'll just start combat, I think. So we'll put one here. And I think the swing team. Obviously, they can have a wandering emperor, but Adeline doesn't tap. So that's the one thing I care about them removing, really. I guess they could put a 1 1 in the first strike on Usher, is the problem. Didn't really think about that. It's a bit of a misplay by me. I shouldn't have swung. That's a bit stupid. I mean, we're still putting in quite a bit of damage. What I probably want to do here is bring back my Gala Greeters by removing, take the opportunity to remove one of them from here. I think.
not the worst attack in the world, but definitely not the best. <coughs> As they now can minus Wandering Emperor like twice. Yeah, I'm gaining life back and exiling my creatures. That is a very nice play. Jetmere could be gone here. Yep. I don't probably feel strong enough to start attacking now. I think I would. Yeah, because I'm quite low as well. Although this life gain could be nice. No attacks for now. <coughs> Gonna struggle to get out of this one now, I think. After that blunder into the Emperor. That is really frustrating. Misplay against this card so often. I think I'll just chump five damage, take four. Man, where are the lands? I think we'll put Torrens in. As go wide is going to be the only wooden con we have here. So I could get a treasure, but I think we need the life. I have managed to pick up a land at least. I can still keep jumping for the time being, um, with the hope of basically bombing Jetmere for the win, but. We're on a two turn clock with the spellbinder. Yeah. Okay, we're no, from a sailing this swing team. Nope. They've got enough uh, mana to keep open for a wandering emperor here, so. Is also a concern going forwards. Alright, at least I can double spell my creatures. That can A, can give me some life. Okay, now I know I've got my land, so I can use this for a counter. So we're on six, eight creatures. So <coughs> if I draw a creature that costs less than two, I can afford to chump and uh, get Jetmere with nine creatures. Point me towards the fight. I'm ready. Be brave. So they've given vigilance. I would have thought they'd give life in it, to be honest. So the spellbinder is lethal, but we've got two blockers. Um, Probably blocking with Raydan, as it's legendary. Uh, sadly, I already have a Thalia down, but if I get one creature there. I think we'll put a 1 1 this turn. Now everything has double strike. I think we just swing at them. Probably lethal. <laughs> so much damage with trample, I just don't. Th yeah, that's got to be it. Oof, that was a tight one. After a definite big misplay from me, nice to be able to pull it back with the power of Jetmere. You know, our, our, our named rare in the deck, so GG. Alright, next game. If we can replicate the glory of last game, play first. Yeah, that's decent enough. <clears throat> Don't quite need that many sources of green, but with a 1 2 3 curve, can't complain about 4 lands.
Okay, so it's like an elves deck maybe? No. No. Treasures. Okay, gun treasures. This can be a very vicious deck. Alright, tapping up front to play. Dragon's fire on the aspirin. Okay. Drawn our only other cave of the frost dragon. Start the go wide train. We might need it. This really is treasure heaven. So I'm guessing it's a dragon top end based on this. But we probably want to hold on to the Cathar for whatever's coming out the back of all these treasures rather than up front. Yeah, let's just delete one of these sentinels. six and keeping one of our humans alive so can't complain too much. I'm a little bit worried about what's coming. I guess it could be a Zeatora. Start flinging creatures at us but um, I don't think we're facing I don't think we're facing any big instance of sorceries in this deck so I think the Valkmira is the way to go here. Make it more expensive to target our stuff. And then keep swinging. So what are we getting in for? Seven? Ah, it's a shame. Yeah, might as well get uh, a red source since we don't have one. Well, as the board stands, we're slightly ahead. Even once this flips, there's nothing scary down there at the moment. We can use the Cathar to get rid of anything we need to. Lots of land for the opponent, which is good. the uh, initiate to delete the fable. Am I missing something here? Oh, it's getting the, the dragon, I see. It is the Adora. Fling it at Adeline. Nice. No, they haven't got their Magda either, though. but Ugh. of course it's running Obnix so this doesn't fit in the deck but they're running it anyway such an annoying card isn't it okay that's nice I mean I can just power up cave to be honest it's probably a better move then I can swing with this and this. Now they can double block, but 
That's okay. Don't mind getting rid of the innkeeper. There's one copy down. My revenge will be cruel and pain. Managed to flip this as well without by not playing a, a creature. Didn't think about that. That nice plus side. It's pretty nice. I think we'll swing first. Try and finish this off. There we go. Okay, this will probably be the end of this game, but let's see. Yeah. Alright, so we know we're playing against treasure creating big dragons. So, I think this could be nice. We'll lower that down. Take one of those. What I probably want is a little bit more removal at the cost of we'll keep one of those at the cost of a couple of these in fact let's take that down to one there we go very similar trade outs to last time we're not playing against spells really um, The one concern we're putting the Cathars in is that we know we're playing against Dragon's Fires, so they can get back whatever they we get rid of. That's why maybe I should have gone for one more Apparition, but either way, we'll give this a go. We've got one more game if we need to uh, try again. Uh, no. One land and a load of crap. Six land. I mean, can't take that either. Man, this is just mulliganing into the ground, isn't it? Six land or one land is my option. Just got to hope. I mean, we've got two turns to draw one. I know we won't, but... Why is it always the second game? We just don't get any land. I don't understand. In fair games, we actually... are winning. So the opponent's sticking, so I guess they have Dragon's Fire, which means if I try and put it on the Aspirin, they'll just kill it. So I think we're going to do the Initiate here. Uh, it's like a not the normal, you want to put it on the Aspirin, but uh, I don't want to give the opponent the right play. So yeah, we have to just waste that one. Oh, man, this game. Dragon's Fire, probably. Ray of Enfeeblement, yeah. Uh, it's what to play first here. <laughs> I don't really mind taking a hit off the Moonvale region, so I guess the Vampire, so that we can actually clock them back for two if they attack, and we can start drawing. The other option was Torrens. I think we have to play the Cathar now. Get rid of gold span. It's too dangerous. It's nice that we now know they don't have a dragon's fire. Unfortunately we haven't managed to draw a land. We've got something that needs red as well. Fable. Let's see if opponent's holding on to their last card or not. They are, okay. Oh man, they drew it. Top deck. I think that's game for us. Taking eight again. And I've not really got anything I can do about it. I can slam back and chump for this. I mean, if I draw red, uh, no. So, but. Sadly, just land screwed. <clears throat> Nearly sort of did something, but not really. So, I think what I'll do is take one of those out and add one of those. I don't like to become too white dependent, but um, 
That's probably it. Otherwise, let's go. Just got to rely on the land base. Come on. What? Six land hand again. Man, this is so vicious. I think we'll have to ditch Torrens, although so nice in this deck. Could ditch the Warhound, I suppose, if you control more land than you. Although it gets me out of if I don't get my third land. I'll ditch the Warhound. What's the odds that I can get a... I mean, I don't know if that land doesn't even help that much, but... I've only got three drops to play, so I should have played this first, really. Okay, that's nice. I think the opponent's holding a... Uh, rare enfeeblement, maybe? It's what we want them to use the ray on, out of these two. Probably this. I mean, it's hard to say. This draws more. This is a wing con. I'd say this. I care less about. We have to use it eventually. We'd rather that than on Jetmare or something. Sadly, all of our creatures are white apart from the one copy of Gala Greeters. This isn't going to live in time for me to draw off it, but you never know. <laughs> great. Oh, no. I think the thing about this kind of deck is that I probably need like some wandering emperors in the sideboard or something that can actually let, allow me to compete with this, because just like the mid rangey aspect of it, it just goes over the top of us. And if we don't win early or don't draw the like nice draw out, we're just not gonna win. I just want a fair game too. <laughs> Would have been nice. This is definitely uh, a fair-ish game, but it's just, um, yeah. Obviously no block there. Come on, three of them. Top 13. Yeah, GG. No chance coming back from that. Oh well, try again. Okay, next game. <clears throat> See how our land treats us this time. Still only three drops, but whatever. I'm not risking uh, ditching it this time. So we're playing against Esper, so it's going to be a Rafine Canive deck, I would say. Fair enough. Uh, 
play this just because I don't know if I need the red sauce or not. <laughs> I think I will, but I'll get rid of this before we take too much damage from it. Alright. We can actually play this out now. It's pretty nice into a to a free board because getting that first eight life swing can't complain about. Interesting block. I wouldn't normally block here for no reason. Save two damage, but I mean you can potentially make that a two two or attack with it for a card later. Okay. I reckon we're looking like a Elspeth here. So this already has life and can trample. I will show him what you got. Uh, we want flying and vigilance to be honest, but I think we'll go vigilance first. That might double block, but it's okay. They double block, our Elspeth is safe. We managed to wipe their board again. Because we can then minus our Elspeth to get the creatures down to make Jetmail work. Okay, now we can't. I wonder what the Fortel is. Um. Is that card? I wonder. Um, potentially, is this an angel's deck? I guess it's angels, right? Rather than Rafine. So, it's probably a Starnheim Unleashed, which makes this good on this side. I don't want them to be able to cast it if it's a Starnheim. If it's a Doomscar, it'll cost them five to cast. Hmm. You might want to use that as an Aganjo, I think. Kill off the Legion Angel. Okay, so for Jetmere we've got five creatures. We need one more to get that trample. And plus, oh man, it was a Doomscar. I don't understand Doomscar and creature decks, I really don't. Confused what the opponent's deck is doing here. Is it a creature deck? Is it angels? It looks like angels, otherwise, why are you playing this? I guess just because it's a one of and it will. I mean, in, in best of one decks, but very confusing. Let's see what happens. I'm trying to work out if this is a Planeswalker's deck, maybe. That's why they're running Doomscar. What? What is happening here? I can't build up a board against this. Well, this is definitely a game for more Thalias and Redans. Trying to work out what their wing con is. It must be Planeswalkers. Okay. I think they're probably out of sweepers now that they started playing creatures again. Just got to hope we can build up any number of creatures. Okay. <coughs> I'm baffled. Please 
do that attack. They're relying on drawing one land, so otherwise it's a free block for me. Free block. They do draw. That's a pretty nice draw. So they can power up the hive. But I think we have to attack anyway. That's a very odd deck from the opponent. Very odd indeed. So they can now double block, I suppose? Or no, don't even want to double block. Take 11. And let one of their lands be destroyed. And they've killed off the creature that I wouldn't ever kill off any of the others personally. I mean, that's the one thing you can vanishing burst and use your other removal on. The thing about Rafine is you do have to keep attacking to, to use the Gnive. It's a tricky creature. Very nice of Kai to live. Searching for an answer, I suppose. <clears throat> Things are going to get a 1 1. So they're at least alive. A 3 3, sorry. So 3 3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess we just play this as a creature to enable Jetmere. No real advantage to Valkyrie right here. I don't understand why that... Oh, because they wouldn't be able to play it out after. So now I can't attack, I don't think, because they can put a 1-1 one, one and first strike on the Legion Angel. So just kill off one of my creatures, so... And the other one just gets chumped. So better off just saving. See if we can build a board wide. that we haven't been outscaled already. I mean, we pretty much have, but... Ditching a lolf. You feel like you've won if you've been in a lolf against this deck. That draw. <laughs> Gone through eight more cards than us. This card basically stabilised them though. No Legion Angel and we'd have won this easily. GG. Okay, so what can we sideboard against this? We're definitely keeping the Redans. I think we want one more Thalia. I would say we want Broken Wings. And probably this. So what we don't need as much is these um, this I'd like to keep that if I can find space for it probably these that's probably it If we can beat this going first, Ugh. If I just <laughs> there are twelve cards under three. Why do we never see them in our opening hand? Just never see them. Hmm. 
Could have kept this to cycle it, maybe, but. It's gonna be a big aspirant. But we've got other four apparitions in here somewhere. We can actually beat this deck, it's just so much power. The Esper decks really look strong. This three guard combo is very, very good. Um, I guess I can just hold open for Seat of the Empire. And then block with Thalia. One due to double legendary. Be interesting to see what comes out of the opponent now. So they can't play Wandering Emperor, which is nice. Not even close. Okay, wedding announcement for four. So I can cave to finish off Kaito, which is probably the thing to do rather than playing Jetmo. Something like this. <clears throat> the problem is, as soon as there's a board wipe, we're in trouble. They're playing out um, these creatures, makes me think there isn't one coming. Oh man. bet all the planeswalker but I've only got one in the deck so um, that's gonna be a doom scar which they can play next turn if they have a land like why have I just got three thousand lands like how many one two three four six seven eight nine lands in the top fifteen um probably don't want to attack that or that. But then <laughs> they didn't drop a land last time, so okay, they still can't afford the Doom Scar. So unless they can deal with the Redan or the Cave, we could sneak a victory. <laughs> that is that is a sneaky vi sneaked victory for sure. What I want is more of these for these matchups. Um, I might pull back in some of these. Although, it's just so much against board wipes, it's just so much value back to them. At least the uh, apparition is less. Just swap that for... No, these are too good in this matchup. Can't, I don't even think I want it. Just like that. If we win this, it is a, it is a miracle. Let's see, we managed to get one victory. Where are my bloody two drops? Two or one drops. This right down is a big heavy lifter in this matchup. Here we go. Come on, where's my one? It's somewhere deep, deep, deep in my deck that I'm not allowed to touch. These are the differences in these games. Okay, opponent doesn't hit their land, so getting a Doom Scar down there. So, bearing in mind this is a Doom Scar, this can make it cost 5 again, but we can't block anyway. 
I think we want to make them cast it, or make them think they want to cast it. If they cast it for three before we play it the very time, we're winning. And if they don't cast it, we can make them not be able to cast it with this. Maybe I should cast this. Because if they trade... Yeah, I think this is the thing to do. If they trade, they don't want to cast Doom Scar. If they don't, well, great. They need a white source, though. Untapped white source, which I just... Yeah. Isn't likely to get. Okay, this is interesting. Now they're able to dig for their land, so we need to shut this shit down by making them cast their Doom Sky, I think. Ah, that'll do. In fact, though, we want to use it on the Aspirant, don't we? Yeah. Is this the right thing to do? Yeah. That way they only get a two if they board wipe and we can keep attacking. And we kill their Rafine if they board wipe. Which otherwise is painful to remove and if they don't remove it, if they don't board wipe then we win with Jetmir. See if they've got that white sauce. They have. Well, at least Rafine's dead, as I said. Right, so. Get this in. And this to stop any more of those board wipes. There they got the Rafine. Well, they know they can discard a non-land for that, I suppose. Yeah, I don't need to block. Uh, yeah, they can't board wipe next turn. Um, yeah, this is the right thing. I mean, they can remove Redan, but then they still think they can't board wipe. No. Definitely not going to have a play on that. That should be game for us then, because we have Jetmere, so unless it gets cancelled or killed pre combat. Yeah, we don't really care about that. One less blocker. In fact, we can play both of these creatures out now. Play this first in case there's any obvious removal they want to play on it or countering. Oh, okay. So if they remove Jetmere, I think they're still dead. Not sure. Yeah, I think they. But they don't. They vanishing burst obviously doesn't work on Jetmere, so. Yeah, good game. that they're trying. Okay. I don't know how I pulled a win out of that one, but <laughs> just about got that. Alright, GG. Okay, here, quick look at the stats on Untucked GG. So, uh, I've only played around 20 or so games, 19 games to be precise. 68% uh, win rate, not brilliant in Platinum, but, you know, it'll climb the ladder pretty, pretty quickly at that rate. 80% on play. Wait, hold on. 
What? I'm not convinced by these stats. Uh, either way, 70% apparently. Um, I guess it's because the best of three is skewing, uh, skewing what these stats look like. But uh, yeah, it did work a lot better in best of three. I felt like it was actually more competitive in that format just because uh, we can adjust to what the opponents are doing with regards to playing very differently against decks that are going to have board wipes versus those that aren't. So uh, that's my feeling of the deck. I think I am going to play with it a little bit more, tweak it, see how we get on. But Jetmere, Nexus of White, yeah, I'd say success so far. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. If you've got any comments about uh, rares that you'd like me to try and play next or um, different decks or ways to improve this deck even, uh, please just leave me a comment. Otherwise, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.